By editing the prompt.txt file, you can include a short description of the type of system you want it to pretend to be. Any password? Check it out. We got a different one this time. Welcome to Hypergame Code Development Server. So every interaction is different. Let me list out. And we have multiple directories that have been created. We have assets, scripts, and tools. There's a readme, a to-do. That's pretty crazy, right? Like AI made these folders for us. I'm going to do a tail F on the SSH log. Notice that we're already getting some activity. It says here that this was a malicious attempt. Here is the summary provided from the AI. There you can see everything that was sent from the user. Look at that. They tried to download a remote script and then they made it executable. <laughs> and then they executed it and then they removed it. Now we can go to visualization. We can switch the chart to a cluster map. And there you can see the locations of where our attacks came from. What's up, Code Crew? In this video, we are going to be exploring and setting up a honeypot powered entirely by AI. This tool has been provided to us from Splunk, who's typically known for their data analytics platforms, typically used at an enterprise level. So you won't be surprised to find out that this is actually a really high quality tool, very easy to set up, a lot of fun to play with, and a great learning experience. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the name of this tool is Deceive the Deception with Evaluative Integrated Validation Engine. It is a high interaction, low effort honeypot system. Ooh, we like low effort. Unlike many other high interaction honeypots, which require substantial effort to seed with realistic users, data, and applications, Deceive AI's backend will do all of this for you automatically. This version of Deceive simulates a Linux server via the SSH protocol. It will log all of the user's inputs, the outputs from the LLM backend, as well as a summary of each session after they end. It'll even tell you if it thinks a user session was benign, suspicious, or outright malicious. Looks like we have a warning here. It says, Deceive is a proof of concept project. It's not production ready. You can try it, learn from it, but be cautious about deploying it in a production environment. Now we're gonna go through this setup, but I wanna bring to your attention that no matter which project you're trying to pull off, you're gonna need the right skills, and that comes from consistent efforts and hands-on learning. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Unlike traditional courses and boring lectures, Brilliant teaches you by doing where you have thousands of interactive lessons in programming, AI, math, and data analysis. What makes it unique is it's designed to actually make concepts stick. So instead of passively watching tutorials and hoping for the best, you get hands-on problem solving that forces you to think, experiment, and truly understand how things work. This approach has been proven to be six times more effective than just watching videos. And you're not just learning from random internet guides. Brilliant's lessons are built by experts from places like MIT, Cal Caltech and Google, so you know you're getting real high quality knowledge that actually helps you level up. Brilliant doesn't just teach coding, it trains you to think like a programmer and analyze data like a pro. So whether you're building security tools, automating scripts, or dissecting attack logs, you need a solid foundation in both programming and data science. With Brilliant's programming courses, you'll go from writing basic Python scripts to actually building real world applications by learning the essential concepts like loops, conditionals, and data structures, all with hands-on problem solving. And if you're into data analysis, their data science courses will teach you how to spot patterns, visualize trends, and analyze real-world data sets from places like Airbnb and Spotify. So you're learning from real data, not just textbook examples. So if you want to level up your coding, AI, or data skills, go check out Brilliant for free. You can either use this link or scan the QR code on the screen. You'll get 30 days of unlimited access, and if you decide to stick with it, you'll also score 20% off an annual premium subscription. The link is also in the description. Go start learning today. Now back to the video. So first thing we want to do is clone our repository. Let me go ahead and copy this. I'm going to come over to DigitalOcean where we're going to create a VPS. So that way this machine is going to be publicly exposed. I'm going to just go with the defaults on the most affordable option as usual. I'm going to set it up for authentication with an SSH key. So we reduce attack surface from brute force login attempts. And I'm going to name this machine Deceive. Okay, create droplet. Okay, let's go in. Let's go to our console. Let's go back to our instructions. And we're going to clone this repository, right? So we're just going to paste that in here okay now we need to install our dependencies make sure you have python 3 installed we recommend running deceive in its own python virtual environment okay so to do that we're going to need python 3 virtual environment and python 3 pip so make sure that you apt install those first yes to continue all right it's moving okay great we're all set okay let's go into our deceive repository let me clear out it's ls and we need to create our virtual environment so we will do a python 3 make virtual environment name Named virtual environment or VEMV. There you can see our virtual environment is ready for us to activate. So we do a source VEMV bin activate. 
And now that we have our virtual environment, we can proceed with our command to install the requirements. I'll just paste that in. Okay, cool. It's actually a pretty pretty long list of requirements that are going to be, to be downloaded. It's actually so long that we're gonna run into an error here pretty soon. Let's just wait for it so you can see what I'm talking about. Here it is. Error, could not install packages due to an OS error, no space left on device. Okay, so that's interesting, right? Because if you look at disk free, you can see that out of our 25 gigs, we have 21 gigs available. So I've already figured this issue out for you. Basically, our VPS is using a RAM-based file system on temp, which is what pip uses. So to fix that, we're just going to create our own temporary directory in our home and we'll install it there. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these commands. Paste that in, dir, run this modified pip install. Okay, so it's installing, no problem now. Now it's just a waiting game. Now this is going to be a pretty timely install. So, so you know, it might be a good chance for you if you go and do this yourself to go grab some coffee as it could take a few minutes. Okay, we're finally all set with our installation for our dependencies. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. We're going to generate the SSH host key. Apparently this is required for security communications. So from the top directory of the repo, generate a key pair using the following command. Okay, so I'm in the top level of the repo. Clear out, paste that in. No passphrase, no passphrase. Okay, what's next? So we're going to copy the template configuration file. So we will run a copy SSH on the config template to be config.ini. Next, we're going to edit that configuration file, paying special attention to the LLM section and the user account section. So let's go ahead and nano that. So inside of here, we see the LLM section. Notice that by default, it's using ChatGPT model 4.0 and at the bottom is where you have your user accounts okay so guest has no password so if someone tries to connect to the to the honeypot as the username guest instant connection if they try to log in as root any password would work so if we wanted to have any username work with any password we would simply add this okay so something else I wanted to point out was that by default this honeypot runs on port 8022 now 8022 is not the default port used for SSH and we want to make this honeypot as real as possible and as attractive as possible. So what we'll do is we will heed to the comments advice and set this to 22. So let me go ahead and move this over and I'll save this. Now, before we run that, our current secure shell connection that we're using right now is running on port 22. So we need to move that over. We will modify our Etsy SSHD config file here. So we come down and you can see that port 22 is commented out as it is the default. And let's just switch it, right? We'll make this one an 8022. Go ahead and save that. Now I got a comment last time that I changed the port on my SSH that there was a command I ran that was unnecessary. But I want you all to see, since it wasn't clear last time, that in order for changes to take effect after changing the port, you have to run these two commands. So we'll go ahead and run those. System control, daemon reload, and a system control restart SSH socket. All right. Right. So now that we've done that, you can see that our SSH is now running on port 8022. So now we're able to run our honeypot without those ports conflicting. But we haven't finished following our instructions, okay? So we just finished editing the configuration file. Now we can tell Deceive what it's emulating. By editing the prompt.txt file, you can include a short description of the type of system you want it to pretend to be. You don't have to be very detailed here, though the more details you provide, the better the simulation will be. You can keep it high level, like you are a video game developer system. Include realistic video game source and asset files. Imagine how much work that would be to do manually. And this thing's just going to emulate that all for us automatically. Pretty crazy, man. Says you can even add additional details. You are an internet facing mail server for big school at EDU somewhere in Virginia. Valid user accounts are named this. Your directories are here. And it gets pretty in depth, right? Even talks about creating emails that make it look like they're dealing with financial aid and things like that. So um, you can you can get really deep with it for this video and just keep being simple, let's just go ahead and check out the default and run it with the default. So we can go ahead and nano on our SSH the prompt text and there you can see you are a video game developer system next step we're going to run the honeypot now we're going to be using open ai which is default i have here on this tab the website platform.openai.com go ahead here and create a new secret key i'll call it splunk ai create secret key let's copy that come over 
and we're gonna do an export, open AI API key, paste that in. Okay, great. Next, we're going to change to the SSH directory and run the following command. Okay, so let's CD into SSH, let's paste that in. And if you were expecting fireworks and champagne popping, I was too, but it says here that the server will just start and not produce any output, but will stay executing in the foreground. So no errors is a good thing, right? It's just ran, it's doing its thing, it's it's running in the foreground. So next step is to test it out. We're just going to secure shell as one of the usernames to the machine. We don't have to specify the port because we already switched that over to port 22. So since this one is running here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up another console. Okay, so let me secure shell as random user at localhost. Remember any username works any password works. Check it out. Welcome to Acme Game Studios Incorporated, building worlds one line at a time. Now Acme Game Studios is pretty, is pretty like a dead giveaway. So let me exit out. Let's try it again. Any password. Check it out. We got a different one this time. Welcome to Hyper Game Code Development Server. So every interaction is different. Let me list out. And we have multiple directories that have been created. We have assets, scripts, and tools. There's a readme, a to-do. That's pretty crazy, right? Like AI made these folders for us. We didn't have to create these by hand. Let's CD into assets assets list out there's even subdirectories go into sounds list out there's some wave mp3 files there's a voiceovers folder remember this was all created from one prompt okay it's all created from one prompt and it's different for every interaction now let's do something that an attacker would do right like let's see let's list out our pseudo privileges with a pseudo dash l sorry random user may not run pseudo on dev hq okay well what if we try to open up the password file there we can see there's some um, random user that we put in, right? It even recognized to put us in there. Game admin, render user. And then let's also look at the shadow file and like a real system would, permission denied. Okay, so we've gotten in there a bit. Let me exit out. Okay, so we tested it out. Next, we're going to be checking out the logging. There is a log file that's inside of the SSH folder. Let me clear out, list, go into deceive, go into SSH, list out, and there is our log file right here. So we can go ahead and do a tail F on that. And it looks like, um, here, let me, let me zoom in a bit. And it looks like um, we're already getting some some activity. Look, here's the source IP, right? I'm trying to find the one that we did. So let me actually exit out of this. I'm going to head on the SSH log. And there's us, right? Source IP, that's us locally. And let me actually come a little deeper. Let's go into like, I don't know, 30 lines. Yep, there's us. You can see the details here. Here, notice that it's in base 64. That's because that's actually what's being returned from the from the terminal, right? So let me clear out. So you can go ahead and put that into a base 64 decode using your pipe. And there we see what was returned from the terminal. Let's go back. Let's look at these logs again. I'm gonna do a tail F on the SSH log. Notice that we're already getting some activity. It says here that this was a malicious attempt. Here is the summary provided from the AI. The user deleted the existing SSH config directory, recreated it, and added a new SSH public key to the authorized keys file. And it gets a little more in depth. And there's multiple of these, right? There's multiple systems that are attacking our honeypot. So now that we've seen that we already have some activity going on, what good would it be for us to get Splunk logs and not throw them into Splunk? So let's go ahead to this website here where you can download Splunk Enterprise for free. After 60 days, you can continue using it for free for non-commercial use. Go ahead, create an account to get that and then once you're here to the downloads page just pick your operating system download it it's a couple gigs but depending on your internet speed you shouldn't have to wait too long i'm going to go ahead and save that to my desktop once it's downloaded go ahead and run that let it do its installation accept a license agreement now this is where we're going to create the credentials for the administrator account now if you're wondering why we're doing this it's because all these logs that you saw here right let's come back to the fresh it's not exactly easy to read right like i'm having the literally like come in and like squint my eyes. It's just not a good experience, okay? So with Splunk, we are able to create dashboards and have a real nice GUI experience. So I'm gonna set my admin name as Splunk. I'm gonna set the password as Splunk123. Don't use this on a production system for credentials, of course, but I'm just trying to get this thing going for you guys. I don't need the start menu shortcut. Go ahead and install that. Okay, Splunk has finished installing. We can go ahead and launch it in our browser. It's running on our local host, port 8000. Go ahead and log in with the credentials that you set. And we are here. Now we wanna add our data. Now you'll notice that my VPS is not connected to my host machine. So to get that file over, I can use what's called a secure copy. So to do that, I'm gonna pop open a terminal for myself and I'm going to secure copy 
with my private key on port 8022 because that's where the real SSH protocol is running for root at target machines address. And we're going to be grabbing from the DC folder, subfolder of SSH, the SSH log.log. And let's save it on our desktop. And you can see we've downloaded the SSH log file, 159 kilobytes. Okay, so let's come back in the Splunk. Yours may be collapsed when you first come. So just come to the Splunk recommended. There is an add data. I do recommend you go through the tour if it's your first time. Go through all the tours. I know it's it's easy for us to be like, I just wanna play and skip it, but I, I actually do recommend going through the tour. So I'm gonna skip it for this video and let's move forward. We're going to upload our data set. Go to select your file on my desktop. I have here the SSH log, click next. You can see a preview of it all. Notice that there's several pages, okay? Click next, it'll ask you for a name. I'll call this, um, I'll call this Deceive, and these are Splunk AI Honeypot. Okay, the host was from Deceive on DigitalOcean. Move forward, submit, and we can start searching. Okay, so remember our logs in the terminal are ugly, they're hard to read, they're not, they're not friendly to look at. So notice now we have all of our logs inside of Splunk ready to be queried, ready to be analyzed, visualized, all that good stuff. On the left-hand side, you'll see interesting fields. So notice we have things like destination IP, we have source IP. The one that we really liked was the details. Okay, so let me click on details. And there you can see all of the different commands that were sent. Again, the ones that are base64 encoded are the user input and output from the LLM. So if, if you need a refresher, you can simply copy that echo it into a base64 decode. There you can see everything that was sent from the user. Look at that. They tried to download a remote script and then they made it executable. <laughs> and then they executed it and then they removed it. Oh man, that's crazy. Uh, and then here you can see, uh, there you can see the AI summary. The user attempted to change attributes. So to view details, we can just add it here further on the query. And there it is for all of them. Now let's go ahead and read them, right? The user attempted to change attributes of the key directory with the change attributes, likely to modify or delete critical SSH configuration or key files. This looks to be a pretty common tactic. The user reset the SSH configuration in the home directory by removing the SSH key directory, recreating it, adding a new public key to the authorized keys file. This is indicative of unauthorized access attempt, often seen as a foothold stage of an attack. The goal is likely to establish persistent access to the system using an SSH key, okay? Now, here is source IP. There's me, right? I interacted with the machine quite a bit. I just tried to see if I could break the terminal by just pushing enter a bunch of times. But there are the other IPs. There are the other interactions here, right? So we can actually visualize this using our Splunk if you wanna make it even cooler. I'm gonna go ahead and get this query. I'm gonna pipe this into IP location on the source IP and then we'll put this into our geostats count. Now we can go to visualization. We can switch the chart to a cluster map and there you can see the locations of where our attacks came from. So yeah, man, pretty cool stuff you can do with Splunk. And then obviously the longer that you have your honeypot running, the more of this data that you will get. Now, if you found this video to be a good learning experience, a lot of fun and easy to digest, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to like, comment, and share with your friends. Be sure to also check out Brilliant in the link below so you can keep your tech skills sharp. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.